Sir, welcome to the fourth episode in this series on the foundations of nature-based systems. And a quick recap. On the first episode, we spoke about magic and nature and the essential relationship between the two. On the second episode... We dug in a little further to understand this power of nature. Then for the third episode, the last episode, we spoke about animism and the life force that permeates everything. So today we're going to start to look at some of the practices or traditions, various traditions of nature-based systems. And there are many, such as Wicca, Shamanism, and Druidry. Today we'll speak about the oldest of them, Shamanism. And that goes very well and hand in hand, and a logical continuation of the last episode, Animism. So let's start first off with a definition of Shamanism. So I'll just read for you a definition that I have here, one that I think puts it very clearly and concisely. So here we go. Shamanism is a spiritual practice found in various cultures worldwide. It's centered around the belief that certain individuals, called shamans, can interact with the spirit world to gain insights, healing and guidance for themselves or their community. Shamans enter altered states of consciousness, often through rituals involving drumming, chanting, fasting, or plant-based medicines, to journey into the spiritual realm. So in simplistic terms, shamanism has at its center the concept of animism. And as we all know, at least the ones that have been following this series, animism is the belief that Everything is part of the greater life force. And as such, everything contains a spirit. And the role of the shaman is to interact with these spirits for the purposes of healing and guidance. So that's it put simply. But let's explore further the role and the practice of the shaman. Shamans are the intermediaries between the physical world and the spiritual world. And they do this by building relationships with the various spirits and forces of nature to help them find the answers that they seek. But as we've said, it's not just guidance they seek. They also believe that illness may be caused by an imbalance or a disruption in nature. Then by communicating with the right spirits and forces of nature, it's believed that these problems may be resolved and the illnesses cured. Now to accomplish all of this, a shaman has to build these relationships with these spirits and forces of nature. So how does he do that? Well, a shaman has to cross those bridges between the world of the physical, and the world of the spiritual. And he does that through a process or a technique known as journeying. And one technique to accomplish these journeys is to enter into a trance-like state where he has one foot in the physical world and the other in the spiritual. And it's in this spiritual world where he's able to find his guides and interact with all of the forces of nature. So what about journeying then? Let's talk a little bit more about journeying. I mean, how does he reach these trance-like states that allow him to cross this bridge between the physical and the spiritual world? Well, there are various techniques. The most used or most common one would be the use of a drum banging out a repetitive and hypnotic rhythm. And along with all this 
constant rhythmic drumming. There may be others that will help by singing, dancing and chanting to help the shaman go further and deeper into his journey. And just to help things along and push things just that much further, there may also be involved the use of some hallucinogenic substances. Now, I don't condone the use of hallucinogenic substances, but this process seems to work very well. Or quite a few. And if that doesn't get you there, well, it was probably never meant to be. And I should add that it's absolutely not necessary to use any external hallucinogenic substances. But these other methods of drumming and chanting can be extremely effective. All you need to do is to let yourself be taken away by the drums and let your mind's eye do the searching. And if you want to try one of these journeys for yourself, then I've done some videos in the past that gives a good introduction and will talk you through from start to finish. And I'll put them down in the script or I'll put a link down in the description down below. Now, moving on, no discussion about shamanism is complete without discussing the concept of totems. So a totem may be seen as a spiritual entity that embodies certain characteristics and traits, oftentimes an animal such as a fox or a wolf, but it could also be a plant or some other kind of natural object. So when we spoke before about the shaman interacting with the natural spirits, then it's these totems that he's interacting with. And he seeks help and guidance from the appropriate totem who embodies the, the skills and characteristics for the work that he wishes to perform. But a shaman doesn't just seek to build a relationship with spirit guides that he can interact with for a specific work. A shaman also has his own personal spiritual guides. So then you may be asking the question, well, how does he choose his spirit guides? How does he choose his own personal totems? The answer to that is, he doesn't. This is not a conscious decision. These guides tend to make themselves known to the shaman. And these guides come to him while in a dream state or in a state of trance. Over time, he builds up a relationship with these spiritual entities. And just as you may have a group of friends, some will become your guides, others your advisors, and others still your helpers. So now to that most important question that I always ask. This concept of shamanism, this, this belief system that was handed down to us through our most ancient of ancestors, is there any place for this, this concept in the modern world? And to answer that, I'll refer you back to the discussion we had on animism. Now, animism and shamanism, they go hand in hand together. It's that same belief that the intelligence of creation, the, the life force of nature that permeates everything. Fits very well with the scientific understanding that everything in the known universe is composed of energy. And it's this energy, this energy that is the source of the creative intelligence, the life force, that interconnects everything. 
in this world. And if you want a more in-depth discussion about the science behind all this, well, it's Plato's key for you. Or more precisely, the key of how to escape Plato's cave. And I'll put a link up there and in the description down below. And with that, I hope you've all enjoyed today's discussion. Give us a thumbs up if you have. Subscribe to the channel if you like this content. Unsubscribe if you do not. With that, I'll see you again very soon on the next one.